boom, here you go. And it also has a full just on and a full off. And of course, the touchpad is the way you'd want to use it. You'd want to shoot, move. Okay? Of course, all the guns that we're working with here are unloaded. And I verified all of that before we even started. That's why, of course, I would never suggest that you point a gun at anybody at any time uh, for any reason. Okay? All right, there's another story. Okay, so there's the CAR 15. There's your standard AR-15. I think I want to draw your attention to one other thing here on the standard AR-15. What I've done for my gun, because I've got rather large hands, is I've replaced the grip with an aftermarket grip. Okay? You can see that this grip is a little larger. Now, again, in the beginning of the program, I stated that the AR-15 could be shot by a 4-foot, 10-pound, uh, excuse me, 4-foot, 10-inch boy or a 6-foot, 7, 6-foot, 10-inch man. And the military, in their wisdom and genius, developed the AR-15 to be able to be shot by just about anybody. All right, you have to think about it. They get just about anybody in the in the uh, recruits. So uh, they've got to design a rifle that almost anybody, man, woman, or child, could shoot accurately. And that's what the AR-15 really is. However, because of that, there are some shortcomings. One of which is the grip itself. If you look at the grip here, it's a very small grip. Again, a lot of people have small hands. If you have a big grip, they're not going to be able to hold or maintain a, a, a control of the weapon. So they put a small grip, and that's good because everybody can shoot it. However, because I've got large hands, my trigger finger wants to fall way out of bounds there. And I also, when I put it into the trigger well, all of a sudden it comes all the way through. And that means I am naturally, in the heat of battle, going to just pick the gun up and put my whole hand in there and all of a sudden I'll be pulling the trigger with that bottom pad on my finger. And we all know for true accuracy you want to pull the trigger with the top pad because that's the, w the most sensitive area of your finger. In fact your sensitivity increases as you come from your arm all the way down to be the most sensitive right at the tip of your finger. So your arm will be more sensitive here than it is up here for pain. How about that? How, how the human body works. But we do know that it's best to try to shoot with the pad of your first index finger. So what I've done with this grip now, by getting a larger grip installed, compared again to the factory or military grip, there are the two. By installing the larger grip, it eats up more of my hand, and hence now you see my finger falls basically right there at the top pad instinctively okay and again instinct is what you're going to fall back to when something happens so if someone's shooting at you that's something happening you're not going to go ahead and think uh oh let me get that front pad on there unless you've had a lot a lot of practice all right now i practice a lot i dry fire a lot so i think that you know i would instinctively now grip the rifle in such a way, especially with this grip, and go right to that spot. However, the military recognized that, you know, hey, we, we have people with small hands, we have people with large hands, so we've got to make sure that anybody can grab that rifle and at least be able to return some fire. So they didn't really care about that extreme accuracy. They just cared about putting some lead down range to be able to suppress the enemy so they wouldn't advance and hence their casualties would increase because, uh, again, advancement is what it's all about in the military. Now we, as Civilians can take the time to customize your gun with the different things that you feel are going to make you a better shooter. And that's what I'm trying to show you here. I put a different grip on here. I've also, here in my CAR, put the light on there. One other thing I want to talk about now is the ammunition that we're using in these uh, AR-15s. You'll see that the uh, AR-15 shoots the 223 cartridge. And one of the things that's very unique about this 223 cartridge is that it's such a lightweight round because it is basically a 55 grain projectile with a whole bunch of gunpowder behind it. So it's lightweight and yet extremely fast. Now the military recognized that when they went to this round that they were sacrificing a little bit of the oomph or punch of the projectile when it hits the intended target. Because now, remember they were shooting 30 odd sixes and 30 caliber type uh, projectiles, rounds, ammunition, in the previous wars. But they also realized that the weight of this 223 ammunition is significantly less than the weight of this ammunition, about two and a half times less. So hence, 
if I, as a soldier, am trying to carry two or three hundred rounds of ammunition with me, I've decreased my load by a significant portion. So the military, in their wisdom again, said to themselves, well, okay, what's important for this battle? Lots of ammunition is important, okay? We need to make sure we can lay down lots of ammo because we can't even see the enemy. They're in the woods, they're in the jungle. All right, so it's more important for our soldiers to be able to have lots of small rounds than half as many big rounds and be able to travel to that next objective without being bogged down by, you know, hundreds of pounds of ammunition. By going to this two, three, three round of ammunition, like I said, they sacrificed a little performance at the far side of the spectrum out there at six and seven and eight hundred yards. This round is much more accurate, much more potent, much more deadly. But then again, they weren't seeing targets out that range. In fact, that's where we're coming right back to CQC, why this weapon was developed for CQCs, because most of the fire that they were doing was within a hundred yards. And that's what this that's where this gun really excelled. All right, so we've talked about the lightweight nature of the rifle, the lightweight nature of the round, and one other important factor is the low recoil that this round has compared to this round. Low recoil. That means anybody, a young boy, can pick this gun up, shoot it, and not get knocked over or not really feel as if they're getting beat up by the gun. In turn, they're going to go ahead and be able to shoot hundreds and hundreds of rounds in a session or a firefight and not be exhausted. I'm certainly going to be tired, but not going to be beat up as if you were shooting a Browning automatic rifle or an M14. So the military, again, recognizing that what's more important in this type of warfare that we're entering, being able to lay down lots and lots of shots, which are still effective because the velocity of this 223 round of ammunition is incredible. And that's what makes it so potent. So all these factors combined make this AR-15 the perfect weapon for CQC. And take it one step further, here in its CAR form, cut down, now it's truly the awesome firearm that it was intended to be. Because now it's very lightweight, can be shot, swung around, carried all day. I can carry two or three hundred rounds of ammunition with me, put a 30 round clip in there, magazine in there, and you're ready to go. And the bottom line is, it's lightweight, lightweight ammo, a low recoil, and the perfect gun for CQC. Obviously at the rear, there's the rear aperture sight. Now let's talk about the AR-15 and the sights that come with the gun from the factory and how they can be interpreted or understood for CQC shooting. Uh, first of all, again, in the first video I did the mastering the AR-15, we talked about how to sight the gun in, so I'm not going to cover that here. I'm just going to talk about the sights as they stand and how they relate to close quarter combat CQC shooting. Uh, obviously on the rear there's a rear aperture sight, and on the front there's a front post. The rear has two different apertures. The large aperture is meant for shooting inside of 200 yards. Okay, there's a larger hole for you to see the front sight through. The small aperture, which is affected by just flipping this down, okay, hopefully Brian's been able to show you a close-up there, the small aperture is intended for use at 200 yards and further. Again, it's a smaller hole, so it gives you a little bit more precision at those farther distances. Now, in both circumstances, the objective is to center the front post inside of the aperture in the back. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind here. The front sight, as you see it, is two and three quarter inches above the center of the bore. Okay? Now, think about that. Two and three quarter inches above the center of the bore. So, if I were to shoot a target right here, right in front of the muzzle, and I line up the sights on the spot I want to hit, the bullet is going to hit two and three quarter inches below where I line up the sights. You follow me? Again, the front sight is two and three quarter inches above the center of the bore where the bullet exits. If I line the sights up 
at a close distance and I 